Uh, we're going to be looking at this topic of listening uh, today. And though I'm going to be doing most of the speaking and you'll be doing most of the listening, I think that I need to be applying this to myself uh, just as much as you do. Uh, I recognise that um, I'm supposed to be kind of a professional listener, but I'm not always a very good one. Uh, yesterday I was sitting down and my wife was sharing with me some things that were going on with someone she knows. Pretty serious things really. They were uh, going through cancer and exploring different options for treatment and so on. And what's going through my mind as she's saying this is the water levels up in the pool. And uh, I, I realised that it would be very inappropriate to say immediately after what uh, Fiona had said, that did you notice that the water level's up in the pool? We must have had a good rain last night. So I responded first and then I said the water levels are up in the pool. Um, now, you, you might be a better listener than me, you might be a worse listener than me, uh, but there are bigger reasons to listen than I think we imagine as we look at this today. So how about we pray for God's help, both as we listen to his word now and as we put it into practice. Let's pray. Loving Father, we ask for your help that we will listen to your word as uh, we read it and consider it uh, just now. Please also help us to apply this uh, as we go from here today. Help us to be better listeners. Help us to be deep listeners. Help us to listen with our heart as well as our mind. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. just want to explore with you first some of... Uh, the poor ways that people can listen. And you'll probably recognise this in others if you don't recognise it in yourself. And that is sometimes when you're in conversation and you find that there's somebody talking, you can be lost in your own mind. Uh, they're saying words, but you're not really listening. Uh, you're thinking perhaps of other things that are going on. It's, it's very easy to get distracted and not concentrate on the person who's listening. That's one form of poor listening. And of course, distraction, well, there are so many possibilities. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Now, even looking around, if you go to a cafe or a restaurant, you can have two people there, they're sitting opposite each other, they're having a conversation, but they've both got their mobile phones going and they're scrolling and they're doing things. And, and you think, well, it's hard enough to actually listen so that we are on the same page communicating how much more difficult is it to listen and flick through Instagram or check Facebook or do your emailing? And, and yet I think we find ourselves like that, don't we? Uh, maybe not as, as perhaps rudely as sitting down for a romantic dinner with our phones out, uh, but we often get caught up doing other things at the time that we're intended to listen. Uh, if it's not the distraction, then I think probably one of the most common things that goes on in conversation is instead of listening to understand, we listen to reply. It's kind of like a game of tennis. Uh, and the pause is the opportunity. So if you really want somebody to listen, then you make sure that you take your breaths the part way through a sentence because you wouldn't want to stop at the end of a sentence because that would give them the opportunity to say something and that might take it off in a completely different direction. Am I right? And uh, often we see that those conversations are kind of like two people giving a lecture to each other in bits and pieces. Uh, so one speaks and then the other says, and it often works like this, that reminds me of... And instead of it being an engagement with what's just been said, it's an opportunity for you to deliver your piece of information. And sometimes it can even become a competition as to you think you've got problems. And so the four Yorkshiremen of uh, multi-Python fame. Uh, or if not seeking perhaps to rebound, it might be that, uh, and I understand that this is the male problem, uh, seeking to solve. Uh, that is, instead of listening to understand, we're listening to come up with a solution. And of course, as soon as a couple of words are said, the solution is very, very clear. And so we've just got to look for our opportunity to give the solution. And that's clearly uh, what she wanted, right? No. no. OK, I'm getting a few nods. Now, I, I don't think it's just couples that experience this, but there is a temptation often to seek to solve rather than to understand. Or it could be poor listening in the sense that 
you just get triggered by something that's been said and you go off on the tangent. You're, you're running down the rabbit hole. Uh, somebody says something about this and that, and it's not really what the conversation's about, but hey, that's more interesting to you than what the conversation was about. So you grab hold of that, you go down the rabbit hole, and the conversation gets taken all over the place. Well, maybe you recognise yourself in some of those poor forms of listening. I get five out of five at different times uh, for these. But I've discovered something, and um, I'm indebted to uh, this book here called Deep Listening. I've got a little picture of it there. Uh, Deep Listening, Impact Beyond Words by Oscar Trimboli. Now, Oscar Trimboli sounds to me like a mafia boss, uh, but hopefully now you remember his name. Um, he's written two books. One's called, I think, How to Listen, and it's a really big fat book, and it costs about $20. He's written this little pocket book with hardly any words in it, and it's $35. Go figure. Um, but if you don't want to pay money and you do want to tap into what this guy has to say, and it, it is really worthwhile, he's got a free podcast. Uh, so you can uh, do whatever you do to get to your podcast and find information about listening from this guy. But there's a couple of things that he pointed out that I found very helpful. And one is what he calls the 125-400 rule. The 125-400 rule, that is, we speak at roughly 125 to 140 words per minute, but we listen at about 400 words a minute. That means that on average, you have the opportunity to spend two-thirds of the time when somebody's speaking thinking about something else. And what we often do is think about something else. We're, we're already planning our response, or we know that we've got a little bit of time to text, or we're tuning into something else that's going on. But, he says, if you think about the fact that you don't need as much time to listen as the person takes to say, that is three times as much effort you can put into the process of listening. Now, that's a helpful perspective, I think, when you're having a conversation to think, OK, let me just slow down and take on board what you're saying. Now, he talks about deep listening in this little book, and um, this is not just going to be a, a kind of a psycho-social uh, explanation around listening. We will get to the Bible, but I, I think there's some things here that are quite helpful that I want to share with you. Um, he identifies five aspects to deep listening, and they're worth recognising because I think they come into play as we go about reading the Scriptures as well. Um, and with what Emily was saying about different times and actually slowing yourself down enough to be willing to spend four times as long reflecting on what it is that you've been reading, it's the same sort of principle that's at work. So the first thing to do with deep listening is listening to yourself. That is knowing that there's stuff going on in your mind. Even just being aware of that, I think, is a massive step forward because so many of us will just go into conversation not thinking about what we bring into that conversation and often what we bring is a whole bunch of things that are going on in our world. Um, it might be that, uh, and this is something that's happened in our marriage, that I'll raise something just as Fiona's cooking the dinner or doing something else. And it just doesn't work to be focused at that time. And, and knowing ourselves and what's going on for ourselves and what we bring to conversation is quite important. Listening to the content, the particular words that are being said, the, the sentences, the argument, listening to all of that is significant. But so too is listening for the context. <coughs> context can help you to understand the significance of what's being said. Why is it being said here? How does it fit with things that have been said before? Um, what's going on that might lead the person to be saying these things? Uh, likewise, the fourth thing in terms of deeper listening, listening for the unsaid. What, what, what's not being said here? Uh, and that might give you opportunity to explore if you're the listener. Tell me more about. Um, I, I'm interested that you didn't actually mention anything about this. How do you feel on that? Just to be able to think about what isn't being said can often help you to understand what is being said. And lastly, 
and substantially, and this is the ultimate purpose in listening, is listening for the meaning. So thinking about what's going on for you, the content, the words, the context, what's not being said, that you might get to the meaning. Um, Helpful little things, and I commend this book uh, to you. But I also commend this book to you. Um, This is called A Bible, and uh, uh, you can pick these up for free. Um, If you haven't got one, then we've got one here tonight that we'd like to give you. Uh, so you'd be more than, uh, we'd be more than uh, keen for you to take a Bible with you if you don't have one. Well, let me uh, look with you at this passage that we're looking at. And uh, there's a number of important things here about listening. Notice in verse 19, we'll pick it up there. He says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. There's a contrast here between listening and speaking. Maybe it's a little bit like what Grandma said, that is God gave you uh, two ears and one mouth, so you should speak half as much as you listen. Uh, But keep in mind that James is writing a letter. And last week, when we looked at the beginning of the letter, we saw that he introduces the idea of people persevering, particularly when things are tough. And I want to commend to you that his letter has integrity. That is, that he's following an argument and that things will have connections to each other. Sometimes people open up the book of James and it's a little bit like a promise box. They'll grab a bit here and a bit there and a bit over there. But we need to try and work out how these things are flowing. And we'll see, I think, that uh, in the context today, there are a number of important things that are significant for persevering as a Christian. And what he talks about here, first of all, has to do with human relationships and how human relations play out in terms of our relationship with God. So the purpose of listening is that we might understand other people, that we might grasp what's being said. We need to be good listeners, quick to listen, that is, it's to be our first focus, without immediately seeking to respond, being slow to speak. The emphasis is on understanding, I take it, to grasp what's being said. And I reckon if we are working in our relationships to grasp what the other person or people are saying, it is far less likely that we are going to have conflict in the relationships. So much conflict comes from not listening to others, assuming what others are thinking, assuming motivation, attributing um, poor motives to others while we attribute good motives to ourselves. One of the things that Fiona and I often do with um, engaged couples as we prepare them for marriage is we take the time on an evening to look at issues of communication and issues of conflict resolution. And it seems to me that they're the two major tools, if you like, for helping a marriage to work well. You've got to be able to communicate. And as we talk about communicating, one of the phrases that gets used again and again is active listening. Active listening has to do with slowing down and responding to the other person in such a way that they understand that they've been heard. Not only heard, but understood. Because so often they're going like this. And if the person is understood, then they're less likely to get angry. And if a person is less likely to get angry, then the relationship will be strengthened. And so, brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. It's going to lead to better relationships. But that's not James' argument. It's true, but he says this is the reason, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. James has a deeper reason for us to be good listeners and not to get angry quickly. It's so that we might live lives that are pleasing to God, so that we might display righteousness in the way that we live. 
And that will, in turn, create good relationships. That will help us to work through conflicts. That will help things not to blow up and escalate and get out of control. That will work together with pleasing God on the one hand and, in, and building relationship on the other hand. And so he continues, verse 21, Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. So the, the, the purpose here of listening, it's, it's not just listening to understand, it's, it's listening to change, to, to, to live God's way, to turn aside from the ways of the world, the moral filth and the evil that's so prevalent, and to listen to God's word and to put God's word into practice. And the word, I think, that's on view here, humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you, is the same word that got mentioned a couple of verses before, where he says in James 1 verse 18, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. See, the thing about God's word is that it's a word of life. It's a word of truth. It's a gospel word. It's good news. It... it it's a word that brings salvation to people. It's a word that communicates the truth about Jesus and in coming to Jesus recognises that we are sinful but our sins are forgiven. And as we look to Jesus and his death and his resurrection, then there is hope for our eternity and there's hope of a transformed life now. So listening to God's word helps us to find salvation in Christ. Listening to God's word helps us to be transformed, to be more like Jesus in this life. And that will flow out into better relationships with people, less conflict with people, and so on. Well, then how are we to listen? Well, it's very active here. Look at verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do it, not forgetting what they've heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Now there's a lot in these few verses and I just want us to look quite closely at what's being said. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says. Now, it's God's word that's on view. God's word is spoken for a purpose, that we might do it, that we might respond. It's, it's not there just for our intellectual fascination. It's not just there so that we can read it and go, oh, that's interesting. That's, that's quite good. You know, I haven't read anything that good for a while. No, it's not for that purpose. It's so that we might do what it says. Do what it says. That's active listening. It's listening for a reason. Now, the image that's used here is really a, quite a funny one in a way. Um, the picture of someone listening to the word but not doing what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Um, what is the purpose of looking in the mirror? I don't know. Hmm? So you look tidy? Now, I looked in the mirror this afternoon as I went into my bathroom. And I looked intently into the mirror. And I thought, Maka, your beard is getting very scruffy. <laughs> it's getting kind of, you know, like woolly around the edges here, like sticking out. And I was so tempted to do nothing about it. But I didn't, for your sakes. <laughs> I trimmed it. I got out my clippers and I trimmed it. Put on the number three and trimmed it that way and this way and that way and this way. And got in the shower and shaved off the head as well and then trimmed around the edges. And then I looked back at the mirror again. And I had done what I should do, having looked at the mirror. That's how we had to approach the word of God. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. 
Now, why is it saying listen to the word? Um, I, I think we need to not overreach on this. Um, I believe it's saying listen to the word rather than read the word because this is well before Gutenberg had invented the printing press. Um, quite simply, if you're a first century Christian, you would have spent most of your time listening to the word, not reading the word. In a gathering, some people would read out the word. Um, you, you may be privileged enough to go up and have a look later at what was read and, and read it for yourself. But for the most part, it was spoken to the group and you needed to listen even more intently because you were potentially only hearing it the once and responding, putting it into practice. Now, if that's what's going on there, how much more ought be expected of us who can listen to it? And I often listen to David Suchet reading it. I can read it in multiple translations. I can go back and read it again and listen again and read it again and listen again and read it again. How much more important is it that I put what I read, what I hear, what I learn into practice? That's the intent for transformation. We, we see here also in verse 25 that the word of God is described as the perfect law that gives freedom. It's interesting, James uses the language of law a couple of times, but he's not, I take it, simply talking about the Old Testament law. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples of it. In, in James chapter 2 and verse 8, he says this, if you keep the royal law found in scripture, and then he quotes, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. Um, or... Down in verse 12, speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Um, I don't think it's talking simply about the Old Testament law. I think in the context, it's one of those word of God words that's being used of the gospel message and the word of God that surrounds that. Yes, it applies to the Old Testament. Yes, it applies to the New well, how are we to read? Well, verse 25 um, is, uh, I think, a, a good little introduction to this. Um, clearly, James hadn't cottoned on to soap yet um, because it sounds a little bit like it. It says there, But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Just, just think of the logic in this verse. First thing, whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. This isn't a cursory read. Right? This is a slow down and look. look. Look carefully. Read it over. Read it again. Read it with a, a highlight pen. Read it with a notebook. Re read it putting notes in the column here. Remember what it is that you're reading. Take time with it. Look intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. Secondly, and continues to do it. Um, it's not sufficient just to read it once, but keep listening, keep reading, keep exploring. Um, maybe make a pattern of daily getting into the word of God. Follow a plan. Read through James. Read through the Old Testament. Read the Bible in a year. Look closely at the book of Colossians. Whatever it might be, look intently into it and keep doing it. Not forgetting what they've heard. So how do we keep remembering it? Well, memory verses are a good way to remember scripture. It might be that you write out a verse and you try and remember that. Talking to somebody else about what you're reading is another good way to remember being in a salt group and exploring it together and sharing different ideas helps to consolidate that. Looking at a sermon that's on a passage and a salt group that's on a passage and reading that same passage for yourself. Well, that's three different ways of looking at these verses so that you might understand and, and follow this through. 
Not forgetting what you've heard, but the best way to not forget is but doing it. There's the purpose. The purpose is that God's word will transform us, that, that our lives will be different because of the word of God. And notice it says they will be blessed in what they do. It's God's good intention that by getting into his word, he will bless our lives. And I wonder whether if we've drifted from looking at the word of God, if we find that we don't have time for the word of God, if we're really putting the Bible aside and it's collecting dust, whether we are missing out on the blessings of God. Well, let me wrap up and... um, tie some of these things together, putting God's word into practice. Um, I think there are, whilst it's not the main thrust of this passage, I I think there are some good tips in verse 19 for how we treat one another. That is, we ought to be people who are good listeners. We, We are quick to listen and we're slow to speak. In other words... In conversation, we're there for the other person. We're we're committed to hearing from them. We value what they have to say. We we want to understand it better. So we we become active in our listening. We explore and we we try and with God's help we succeed in in not being distracted, in not looking to rebound, in, in not seeking to solve quickly, but to understand, to communicate to love that can be our goal and and listening to one another here so that we are quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry also so that we live the life that God desires that we live so if you're working at your communication with your spouse with a friend with your boss or a colleague do it not simply to improve the relationship but to live out what it is to be Christian. Secondly, listening to God's word. Uh, There's great encouragement here, isn't there, to to take the time to get into the scriptures. Um, And you know what? It's never too late to start. And if you've been doing it and it was going so well and you now feel guilty because you've let it slide, well, don't simply feel guilty. Start. And... God knows that you'll be blessed as you start. If it's hard and you struggle with it, well, maybe talk with a Christian brother or sister about how they read the Bible. Share ideas. Maybe try the soap strategy. I I suggest a change to soap, um, having just introduced it. Um, I think it's implicit that you're going to be reading scripture when you've got this. So I recommend changing the word scripture to slow. Slow down. Right? You're going to be reading scripture, slow down as you do it. Observe what you're reading. Apply and pray about it. But if you think that by changing scripture to slow, you'll be tempted to read other things, leave scripture written there. Okay? Um, not that it's bad to read other things, but you'll be blessed by getting into the word of God. And lastly, um, be somebody who reads God's word, who listens to God's word, who discusses God's word for the purpose of transformation rather than information. I spent a lot of years in theological education and much of what I was studying had a direct Uh, outcome and that was passing an exam Um, and it's so important for somebody studying the Bible to take it deeper than passing an exam Um, someone once said to me that the road to hell is paved with theological degrees and I could see how that could happen because you could treat the word of God as a purely academic text And it will have more than enough to occupy you for years and years. You could do PhDs on many, many verses and you could become so intellectually consumed with the Bible and it might change nothing. And that is not what the Bible's for. 
It's actually to transform you, not simply to inform you. So let's pray that uh, we will be transformed. And, and I'd like to finish with these words from Romans chapter 12. And it's a part of scripture that uh, many of us memorized a few years ago. In fact, uh, one of us uh, memorized the whole of Romans 12. And put it on video, and it was a great encouragement to uh, to listen to that. Um, we listened to some raps. Uh, we listened to someone doing it. To I think it was Advance Australia Fair. We had various other uh, memory aids. But the key thing about Romans 12 is that it be put into practice. And I'll finish with these words. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Let's pray that God will transform us to become more and more like Jesus as we read his word. Let's pray now. Our loving Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the privilege of not only hearing it, but having it bound in a book that we can read. We thank you for the faithful men and women who've translated the scriptures and handed them down um, year after year, century after century. We thank you for the introduction of the printing press and of the internet that have, have just opened up the exposure to the scriptures we thank you for good, faithful, modern translations that make it available to men, women and children um, in so many languages around this world. And we, um, we ask your forgiveness uh, for having a low view of your word, for, for parking it at the side, for not reading it um, so that you read us and change us. And so we just pray for one another now that we will be people who listen well who listen to be changed. And we pray that you'll help us to put your word into practice in our lives, that we'll be people who reflect uh, you to others. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.